This episode of Rolled Up is brought to you in part by Defense Soap and Zebra Mats. I'm an avid traveler, CEO of BuddhaVideos.com, and lifelong student of the martial arts, who strives to know more about the competitors and instructors who are revolutionizing the jiu-jitsu lifestyle. Join me in my journey as I train, learn, and get rolled up. Connecting North and South America, the Isthmus of Panama is not only the geographical center of the two continents, but is also quickly becoming an economic center as well. With a thriving banking system and now the profitable canal, Panama has seen rapid economic growth in all areas, including Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I'm here in Panama by invitation of my good friend, Paulo Castro. One of the first black belts under Carlos Gracie Jr., Paulo trained at the Gracie Baja headquarters in Rio de Janeiro with other big names, including Henzo Gracie, Soneca, Dracolino, Gordo, and the Machado brothers. Uh, training with Paulo Castro is very good. He's a tough professor. We want to teach all the techniques. He doesn't reserve anything by him for himself. We want to teach uh, all the students all his knowledge. Uh, he's a tough professor, tough fighter, a good person also. He keeps you on track every time and he pushes you to keep training all days. I, I think the unique thing is that we all came from the same, from the same place. We all started on the, under the same person and everybody started going their own way. So at the end, we all are the same. We all, all especially the higher belts here in Panama, we all started the, almost the same time and we all uh, we know Everybody, we know each one, we, we know like, the students from my students, know their students. So we're always in, in, in touch, so there's a good atmosphere in, in between the guys who practice Jiu-Jitsu. The Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and I see it catching on here in just the one year I've been with us. So I think Panama should do all right. Hopefully punch above its weight. I like that it keeps my mind busy, it's very mental. You're always thinking about the next moves that you want to implement and how to make your game better. I like that, you know, physically, I mean, it's the best exercise ever. We say that this is a very big, small country. We have many things in common in different countries. Uh, we have a great canal, a great economy, uh, great in in inversion, great banking also sector, private industry, one of the first country in the world you can do business with. Uh, it's a great place to establish or to retire. So it's a combination of everything. We are open to, to the world to do business. Built in 1914 by the United States, the Panama Canal raises and lowers ships 26 meters above sea level, allowing transport between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. More than 14,000 ships use the canal each year, making it one of the major sources of income for the country and has been named one of the seven wonders of the modern world. Construction is currently underway on canal expansion and is expected to be completed in 2015. So Paula, what motivated you to leave Brazil and move here to Panama? Oh. I come to Panama since 2000, 2001, because I have a student to move to Panama, up at Grace Barra here. So I came like once, twice a year, do the seminars here. And two years ago, I started planning to leave Brazil, and my friend told me, hey, come to Panama, it's nice here, the weather is good, the economy is good, we're growing, we have a, a, a space to make more schools of Jiu-Jitsu here. So I take the opportunity and move here. What did you think of the country when you, uh, when you moved here? Did you like it? Uh, yeah, it's nice. Like I said before, uh, the economy is good, so it's easy to make it business over here, and the people starting knowing more about Jiu-Jitsu, the school is growing, the kids come, start enjoying the schools, and they, they make a, a work to do, to, ha this, to do this happen. So is it an easy transition for you? Yeah, uh, I already left, uh, lived in Miami before, so here's the weather almost similar, <laughs> the, the, the people from Miami is here, it's all, all, uh, all Latin guys, and so it was easy. Hmm. Is it difficult for you, I mean, now you're teaching all the time. Of course, in Brazil, you were training at the, at the Gracie Baja headquarters, probably training with lots of tough guys. Yeah. Do you feel that you don't get challenged enough in your personal training? Oh yeah, man, that's the, the hardest part, just teaching, has nobody to train, and that's why I, most of the time, well, Whatever time I have, I go to California and train in the camps or train the guys over there because otherwise it's hard just to 
keep the teaching. So you're one of the guys that's helping spread Jiu-Jitsu all around the world. Uh, was Carlos Gracie Jr. happy with that, the fact that you decided to move here? Oh yeah, man. <laughs> Carlos uh, got happy because now he know he has somebody who can trust and is he is he in Panama, so he can we can make it like a nice work. I work with CDMA from IBJJF to bring tournaments here and also the schools growing here too. So you mentioned you're going to start doing IBJJF tournaments here in Panama. What else do you expect in the next few years? Oh, I, uh, I hope we have the IBJJF. Also, we make a few local tournaments for the people in Panama. And I hope the, the open more schools, more people start training, and the people start knowing more Jiu-Jitsu. But because more important than only my school grow is the people of the Panama know about Jiu-Jitsu. Because when the, the whole country know about Jiu-Jitsu, they open more schools, more training. And of course, my school is going to have the benefit too. Is your goal for Panama to be the center of Central America as far as Jiu-Jitsu is concerned? Oh yeah, man. If you can do that, it's going to be great because the Panama has a good location and the copy airlines make a lot of connections here. So it's easy to travel, no visa required. So every, everybody can come from all over the world here, no visa just have your passport and come here and has a lot of direct flights from most of big cities in the world to here so it's easy to come here and the weather is nice so it's always hot has no no snow in not you can so <laughs> it's a good place to come and visit or come and stay for a while zebra mats the official mat sponsor of the world's greatest jiu-jitsu tournaments the International Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Federation, Abu Dhabi Combat Club, and UAE Jiu-Jitsu trust in Zebra Mats for unparalleled safety, performance, and durability. For more information, please visit zebramats.com. Zebra Mats, simply the best. So uh, being from Rio, you're used to hiking a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. In Barra da Tijuca, we have the mountain close to the school and Carlos Grace loves to, to go up every day over there. And usually the new guys come to the school and say, oh, I go too, I go too. And the young guys, strong, they think, oh, I'm going to be there first. And they go, we go, and Carlos goes rolling, and they pass Carlos, hey, Carlos, bye. And they, in the middle of the trail, they tire and start, Carlos pass by them. Oh, you're tired. Okay, now we go there. <laughs> There's a good lesson from that, right? Oh yeah. It's not a race. Keep the keep the pace and keep going. <laughs> That's very nice. And Carlos do hiking in California too, man? Yeah, yeah, he likes the thousand steps at the thousand beach. Steps. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I think he does better than uh, than a lot of the young guys. <laughs> oh for sure man. Man, Carlos is he go to the dunas in Florianópolis, I know they they told me that man, they walk in the sand. Man, everybody stay behind. Mm. Nobody can follow him, and they keep the pace and keep the. It's unbelievable. He's 50 years old and beat up everybody. <laughs> Do you think the 46-year-old Paulo is stronger than the 20-year-old? Oh man, he's smarter. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I still living the same lifestyle, and that's good, man. Mm -hmm. That's very really good, keeping me healthy, and you know. And sure, there's a lot of things in, in, that can keep you healthy. Yoga, Pilates, all these things. Yeah. But the thing with Jiu-Jitsu is, we know we're going to go there to fight. So we have oh, this yeah, big motivation to, keep to stay prepared. healthy. Yeah, be prepared always for the, the competition, mm -hmm. for the training. And every day training is a, a little competition. Right. Because you know, you train with, with your friend. Oh, he beat me up yesterday. Today I'm going to give him a hard time. Mm -hmm. It's always good to have this type, kind of competition. And a lot of other sports have seasons, so people get fat, you know, off season and oh, get yeah. shaped in the season. But Jiu Jitsu has no season, so we always have to have. <laughs> always, man. Always training for the next competition, for the next tournament, or just for training, keeping shape. And we have a, a friend, a student now, he showed up in the school like here, almost a year ago, eight months ago. The guy was fat, almost 200 pounds. 200? No, almost 300 pounds. 287 pounds. And he come to school and, hey, Paulo, I, I, I want to come back to train. I said, okay. I didn't believe because the guy said, oh, okay. He show up, start training. Man, now he lost 47 pounds. Mm. And he's in shape, not in shape, but man, he's, he's much better. And he told me, Paulo, my wife want to thank you because change changed all my lifestyle, man. 
Before I had a doctor problems and going to the doctor, now I'm better. My wife feel better because I sleep better, I treat everybody better, man. It's, it's very nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Besides weight loss, what other qualities do you see in students after they start jujitsu? Oh man, the, the attitude, most of, at least in my school, I try to make them be respectful, don't be like an asshole, don't act like an asshole. They, tra they train very respectful the people. Uh, I think that's the most important. And uh, gain confidence because when a guy are confident, they they know I can kill that guy, but why are they gonna kill him? Mm -hmm. They're gonna train for a tournament it's much better than be the fight in the streets or all kind of stuff. I think the best is have you, you gain confidence. You you act like a nice guy. That's the the, the best part of jujitsu. And I think most of the guys, not now. Now is is most of the people come to jujitsu they have a, a different thinking. But in the beginning, man, most of the people come to jujitsu was for kill somebody. Mm. And Carlos Grace changed a lot of minds on that. I remember all the guys fight on the streets and Carlos talking, hey guys, don't do that, don't do this. And he changed a lot of people. A lot of fighters, street fighters, become uh, great instructors, great professors, and great competitors. Change a lot of, uh, a lot of people. Do you think jiu-jitsu could have grown as much as it has if that change wasn't made? No way, man. <laughs> it's gonna be like a street fight and have a, a small group and that's it. Do you miss the old days when it was just <laughs> you and the Gracie family? Oh yeah, man. <laughs> when I remember, man, the training we had over there, all the guys together, and the way we trained very, very hard was fun, man. But like I told you, man, it doesn't work. Work for a, a small group of people. And we make, at the time, when we was there, at the time, uh, we make fun of those kind of guys, like we have an art uh, soap opera guy come to the school. I make fun of the guy, oh, why this guy is coming here, man? <laughs> I gotta kick his ass, and that's it. <laughs> but it was, it, was, it was nice, and Carlos uh, trained the guy and put the guy to training, and then Carlos started to change the mind of the people. And, and separate the group. So you want to compete? We have a competition team. You want to just train for fun? Go over there. You can go over there train for fun with those guys. But if you go over there training with those guys, you cannot hurt them. You cannot. You train light and cheat them, teach them, so these guys can be harder. That's the the good part. So that was really the beginning of what now in Gracie Baja is called Jiu Jitsu for Everyone. Yeah, that's 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 the the, the beginner. Yeah, Carlos has those visions long, long time ago. I remember once Carlos talking, because the tournaments in Jiu-Jitsu in Brazil before was, was crazy, man. You go to fight and wait like eight hours to do your fight. You never know the time. The organization sucks. And then Carlos started doing the, 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 the organization change. And one day, I remember, we sit in the school, uh, a small group, his small group, the, 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 the students, and then he said to us, uh, one day, guys, we're gonna do a tournament in the United States and put a thousand people to fight over there. Man, we don't have a 500 students in the, in the tournaments in Brazil. And they have my, hey, Carlos, you're crazy, Carlos. And now you see the real, reality. You go to the Panans, the Woods, a lot of people training and Over fighting. 3, yeah, yeah, a lot of people, man. To get a feel for the history and culture of Panama, I get a tour of Casco Viejo by my friend Diego Garcia de Paredes. Man, this whole city is really nice. When, when do you think it was built? Uh, this is the second Panama City and it was built in the late 1500s, early 1600s, and it all grew from here. Is everything original around here? Yes. Besides the canal, would you say this is one of the more touristy parts of the, the city? Well, that depends on what kind of tourism you're looking for. But if you're looking for history, this is full of history. There is 400 plus years of history here. Everything from religion, culture, government, uh, the way not only Panama, but Central and South America was made, came out of here. Later on, we're gonna go to Palacio Bolivar, which is where actually Simon Bolivar uh, 
made most of his decisions about the greater Colombia back in the day. Who were the first settlers in this area? Uh, actually, this is since this is a this is the second Panama City. Uh, the first Panama City, which is called Panama Viejo, was attacked by Captain Morgan, the pirate. And uh, actually, the settlers knew Captain Morgan was coming in. And uh, when when they found out he was coming, they they took everything of value, took it out, and they themselves burnt the city. So when when the pirates came, there was nothing to pillage. There was no city. It was everything was burnt down. And then they moved to this area, which is actually a natural pen peninsula. And we're right now at the tip, which is called Plaza de Francia and the Bovedas, which are the dungeons of the old city nowadays, restaurants and shops and stuff like that. Right here, you can see uh, that's the National Institute of Culture and Art. Right next to it is a very old theater called Anita Villalas. And to my right, this is the French Embassy. This is called Plaza de Francia uh, because it's in honor to, to the first uh, attempt to build a canal by the French people. The, before the Americans were ever here to build a canal, Panama had a contract with France to do it with, uh, with a, a famous engineer called Lesseps who did the... the uh, Suez Canal. Yeah, that one. And uh, they started it, but they couldn't handle malaria or yellow fever and all that. So they left the, the, the canal unfinished. And then by the late 1800s, early 1900s, Actually, 1903, 1904 is when we started dealing with the Americans and they started building the canal that was then opened in, uh, in August 15th, 1914. That's why next year the canal will turn 100 years old. So, Paulo, take me back to the old days of training at the Gracie Baja headquarters in Rio. Okay. What was it like? Who was training there? Oh, man. When I start training over there, at the time, for you have an idea, Renzo was just promoted to the Purple Belt. Um, we had training with Riga Machado, Carlos Soneca, Jean Jacques, uh, Zé Beleza, and another guys, Sergio Nasser at the time as a Purple Belt, very good in the guys. Uh, Draculino, Gordo start training at the time too, so it was very good timing. And who was teaching all the classes? Uh, at the time I started was uh, Zé Beleza, and the other instructors are the Carlo Machado and Jean Jacques. And you credit Carlos Gracie Jr. as being your teacher. Did he teach a lot of your classes? Oh yeah, after a while, when we, because we start in the, I started in the old house. By the time we moved to the Spaço Vital, the, 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 the main headquarters still until today, then Carlos Gracie started teaching the class. Because at the time I started training, I was a blue belt, a new guy, and you know, Carlos Gracie are more focused on the, the high rank belts. So at the time starting having the competition team, they starting make more put more interest in those guys too. When you think back of those old days when you're going through the ranks, what's your most memorable time? Oh man, I have I have a few histories. Once I have a, a tournament, I a very good tournament, I have the final with the guy and kick the guy ass, but the referee was the guy is cool. So the guy I kick the guy ass and the guy is in the fight. And so, I think one minute to finish the fight, I get the guy in the arm lock, try to submit, the guy didn't tap. I put the arm to the side, they make a lot of pressure in the arm, broke, man. And I said, fuck, it broke, but the guy didn't tap. And I said, the referee, hey, guy, the arm is broke. And the guy, what? And they stand up in the arm, the guy make like this. And then the guy will fall out. <laughs> What's funny? <laughs> so when you think back of how you were training back then, of course, the training styles have changed to it as oh, it yeah, is a lot. now. But um, you mentioned before that you think it's better the way it is now. Oh yeah, because if you, they still teach in the same way you used to teach back then, man, today the Jiu-Jitsu should not be like that. It's going to be a tournament, small tournaments and uh, tough guys, but small tournaments. Today we can see, like you saw in the class today, people 56 years old train Jiu-Jitsu. Back then it was impossible. Everybody tried to kill everybody. I remember I was a blue belt and tried to kill the black belt guys. <laughs> That's my goal, kill the guy. That I want to show to Carlos I, I'm the very good guy. It's stupid, but <laughs> that's the way it worked before. 
The tournaments are getting larger and larger every year. Jiu Jitsu is growing in Panama a lot. Do you think it can grow in all the countries as it is growing in here? Yeah, I hope so, man. I hope because, uh, now we have Jiu Jitsu in Hungary. I didn't know, man. I, I met a guy there teaching Jiu Jitsu. I said, man, we have Jiu Jitsu in North, oh, South Korea, in Singapore, we have Jiu Jitsu everywhere. I bring Jiu Jitsu to Panama. And now I'm doing, a, I think I'm doing a, a nice work here. And I hope in Panama in a few years has a very good jiu-jitsu. The IBJJF presents the first annual Panama Open on December 1st, 2013. Travel to Panama is easy with direct flights from most cities in the U.S. and Brazil. No visa is required and American dollars are accepted everywhere. Plus, you receive 30 days of free tourist health insurance. For more information and discounted airfare, please visit IBJJF.com. This actually were the dungeons in the old city in the 1600s, 1700s. This is where they kept their prisoners. Uh, right now they turned it into an art gallery and right next door is a very good French restaurant. In Jiu Jitsu we deal with a little bit of torture, but the torture here was on a whole different level, huh? Yeah, I, ca I can't imagine back in the day. I mean, sometimes we say an arm bar in Americana hurts, but here it was pain to a whole different level. Inside the dungeons, they used to torture pirates. Uh, you can see these like lumps on the wall. They used to tie them with their arms stretched like this and whip them so they would cut them. And inside the cuts, they would place crabs for them to start nibbling and eating. Right now where we're standing, there's below us another level of dungeons. And those you can call it death row. Uh, when you were sentenced to death, they would send you to that dungeon and you will die with a, with a tide. And it's, it's interesting, I mean, it, how the human psyche works. Tide changes every six hours. So if the tide's going down, it's gonna come back up in 12 hours because in six hours you have low tide and, and imagine having to wait 10 hours knowing you're gonna die drowned. That's torture. And the last one is they would throw you out the window and then you get eaten by sharks in those days. Mm. He speaks that here you have, this is fake rock. Because this is where actually it was the, the secret entrance to the lower dungeons, the lower prison. Oh wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> wow, I didn't know this one, this is new. This is a tunnel that connects you all the way, if you see that's part of the ventilation of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. So if you can see back there, the two, top, the two turrets of mm -hmm. the cathedral, and those are the first two uh, photos would be like light posts in Panama City from the back in the day. And this is how you get from here, there. Every, every church in the city is connected by tunnels. Is it still usable? Todavía se, eh, los, los túneles están habilitados. Están cerrados las entradas. Está a close, ¿no? La entrada. Uh, every entrance is closed. Pero en el centro está normal. Como They're normal. like back in the day. Uh, the entrances are closed. Pónganse aquí al ladito mío. Ve, pónganse. Ah, okay. It's a sun clock mm. with the obelisk. This is 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And well, right now it's cloudy, but when it's sunny, it says this is 12, 3, 6, and 9. These are the, the, the guys who participate in the construction of Panama, and the only Panamanian one is Pedro Sosa. And this guy right here is uh, Fernando Lesseps, the French engineer who did uh, the Canal de Suez, and the one who started the idea of the Canal, the Panama Canal. Wow. Mm -hmm.